it is time for the Crypto Hour of Power. Got Brandon in the studio, mate. You're looking at a million bucks. Where in the merch? I love the merch. Yeah, bro. All merch stuff. It's tax evasion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Minimising no. tax. That's correct. Use the correct terminology, please. Fantastic, mate. Yeah. I'm ready and pumped for a big uh, Crypto Hour of Power because you've got a, as you do, every week, mate, you've got a special guest on the phone. Yes, I do. Uh, would you like I know to, special people. You do. But I know you. You're a very special person. <laughs> <laughs> I, sh I shop in the special departments. Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> Who have you got on the phone for us uh, this week, my friend? Today we have the the great Minnie. How are you there? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks, mate. I'm good. Welcome to the the Crypto Hour of Power. Um, now, can I just grab a notepad, please? Sure, mate. No, sir. No. I just mean, I shouldn't have to ask, really. Oh, there geez. you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's got his name on it. So yeah. There you go. We're, we're working on our professionalism, Mini. Oh, All right. Yeah. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> There's no need to rush these things. Come on. Uh, well, uh, Mini's actually uh, a mutual, uh, well, as a mutual friend of ours, which is Julia. Um, ah, right. Very yes. Cool. The, the great Julia, which uh, she's in Germany at the moment. Is she? Uh, yes. She's um she's on a holiday, well, kind of a holiday, anyways. Right. Um. Yep. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, I uh, went to a uh, real estate uh, was it Rewa event um the other day. Yep. And was in a room full of Rewa people. Well, well, not real Rewa, but they were real estate people <laughs> rather. Uh, very interesting crowd, not very diverse. Uh, and anyways, and uh, Minnie was up there and uh, doing a present presentation on uh, and educating them on crypto, mm. and uh, yeah, fully red pilling them or orange pilling them. Yep. Um, and yeah, it was just a, an amazing job. So I just went, walked up to her, I think at the halfway mark or something like that, and just said, "Hey, man, can you come on the radio show? I love your work." So that's how we've come to be where we are at the moment. So Minnie, if you just want to give us a little introduction about yourself, your role, and how you actually got into crypto. Well, that's not a little bit, that's a lot bit, but anyway, we'll start with that. <laughs> um, I guess I, to, I start from the beginning. I got interested in crypto um, when my son was doing some online gaming and they started using crypto and he told me, you know, that it was um, just getting this money, taking it down to the post office and getting Bitcoin and playing these games and I went, what's that? So I started looking at it and sort of dismissed it, sort of thought, oh, yeah, sounds like great gaming stuff then um just kept it because i'd had that in the back of my mind i guess and i was thinking about the currency aspect of it and then started looking at it more seriously in say 2016 late um and actually read the white paper the bitcoin white paper and it started to gel for me how that could be transformational in the way that we use currency um and particularly the the aspect of it being a ownership by the people who have the money right so the bank's money's not in the bank where somebody else is controlling it you have your own um, coins in your own wallet so that started to be make me really interested in what was happening and then i looked at the blockchain technology um yep. underpinning all of that started that deep dive and as you know when you do a deep dive in crypto you could end up in all sorts of yes places, so. <laughs> it's a rabbit warren <laughs> it is and it took me quite some time to go through that um, and to get a fundamental, I guess, understanding of it. And then I, as I generally do with anything I do, is look at who's teaching this stuff and, and who's the best at it. Yep. And I actually I did, went through a few crypto meetups, which probably, Brandon, you were in those meetups in the early days as well. There weren't yep. many of us. No, that's right. And I came across... Um, at that time, it was called Taurus Institute. Well, it wasn't really called anything, but it was a, an educational program that was started. And I joined up with those guys and, you know, paid quite a lot of money in the first 12 months to actually learn what they were learning. Um, and we went um, to Singapore and we did the Bitcoin or the crypto meetup in Singapore, which was pretty awesome. Yeah. And then sort of got to really get some more fundamental understanding and understand how to get into it and how to buy crypto and what to buy and what to look for, all those sort of things. So that's where it all started from. Uh, then I, obviously, with those early meetups, I met Julia and Abiti. Yep. Um, and they were doing all sorts of things in crypto space. And when I came across, I was in a real estate sales and property investor, real estate salesperson, um, 
and now director of Tech Stack. But in those early days, met up with Julia and Abiti um, and started talking to them about what they were doing. And then real estate course came up across my desk and it was on um, blockchain enabling trust. And I thought, oh, wow, that's pretty out there for Rewa to be able to run those courses and then realised it was Tech Stack. So I, I just joined and went along and then met Abiti and Julia there again. And I went to that course and thought, this is great education and spent more and more time with Julia and Abiti and then started running those training courses for Tech Stack, um, which has now um, turned into being a director of Tech Stack. So that's it pretty much in a nutshell. Right. Okay. Well, that was a bit of an evolution, wasn't it? You, know, you sort of it catch was. up with a couple of people just by random, start talking about crypto, and all of a sudden you're besties. Yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. started with Dungeons and Dragons. It'll go where they go. Oh, just, you never know when you go down that Dungeon and Dragon route, you could end up anywhere. You yeah, certainly that's right, man. <laughs> um, just uh, re- uh, reversing back to a couple of things you said. You said your son uh, was um, uh, doing crypto um, uh, with the gaming and that, and you pretty much ignored mm. it. Jeez, how long ago was that? And did he buy Bitcoin at the time? Is, you, is yeah. your son like a multi-millionaire at this stage? <laughs> well, he should have been. Oh. I guess he had 20 Bitcoin. Oh, oh so. um, When Mount Gox went down. Oh, dear. But oh, it dear. it had been sitting on a heart, you know, like as it does. You, you, yeah. It's worth, you know, $20 probably at that time. Yep, this is 2013, 14, I think. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, got over it didn't worry about it um and then when mount gox went down and he started i started talking to him about it i said did you have any and he said yeah 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 i had about 20 i said well grab your hard drive let's get it sorted and he goes oh i'm pretty sure i threw that out oh Oh. dear 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 dear. so (laughs) started for him a long journey of going through um all the emails and applications Mm. to mount gox to try and prove ownership etc unfortunately for him that didn't come about yep um which he still laments but um you know, unless you've got your keys, you don't have your crypto, as we know. So, yep, yep, 100%, unfortunately, right? even trips to the tip um, to try and find where those hard drives might have been didn't. Yep. <laughs> we're, we're not fruitful. <laughs> Jesus. I would look under every last bit of tip. Trust me. <laughs> right, eh? <laughs> Seriously, the house was upside down for you know mm. a good month. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. All right. Well, at least he learned a lesson nice and young, and not later on in life. Yes. Eh? You know. Well, yeah, you say that, but sometimes that lesson you learn is sort of like, just don't get involved. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> just get burnt. I'm out of here. You just get burnt. Uh, all right. So just uh, you know, once again, just rewinding back a bit, like, what, what were you doing pre-crypto? You said I uh, mentioned something about real estate. Were you investing in real estate or you were an agent or what were you doing? Uh, so I was, my background is accounting um, and fundamental accounting, accounting and business management and I had my own business in um, setting up small to medium enterprises with systems processes and software that make their business run well and teaching them how to read profit and losses and balance sheets and liaison with their accountants so that everybody's on the same page so that I was doing that and then um, the market situation for real estate started to become really interesting I was involved in a large lot subdivision in Geraldton and I could see the price of these blocks increasing every week. And I thought, that's got to be something I can do there because they weren't titled. And so then just went down this rabbit hole of how do we do this? So we basically were buying land for $1,000, um, holding it for a couple of months, on selling it before it settled, mm. making you know some good money and um, continuing that process and then started building houses on these blocks when the market was still really buoyant. So probably 10 years um, I was doing that, right. buying, selling, property investing, all sorts of um, avenues, even subdivisions in different places, you know, all over the place. So that kept me busy for those years. And then I went into sales when the GFC happened. Oh, good timing. Yeah. <laughs> good timing, sister. <laughs> Well, you know, when you've got a lot of assets and you're paying interest on all of them, you need some cash flow. So that's where the yeah. going into sales happened. Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Okay, well, we're going to go to a song in a sec. Oh, uh, we can do that. And Absolutely. when we uh, come back, we're going to sort of talk about um, why crypto and why real estate and uh, how they're joining forces.
forces basically and uh, the, the benefits towards uh, using uh, the blockchain and crypto for real estate. So, yeah, we'll be back. Oh, what song are we putting on, Aaron? Oh, mate. One of yours, of course. Oh, they we'll all are, mate. Get, They are. Yeah, you but... are not allowed to put on any songs on this show. Oh, I feel like uh-huh. I'm being handcuffed here. I really <laughs> do. But the problem is, and not in a fun way. <laughs> it is an absolutely awesome song. It's a bit of it's 18 after 1, Edge Radio Australia, and of course, this is the Hour of Power, the Crypto Hour of Power, no less, and we've got Brandon in front of me, mate, and your special guest on the phone. Yes, Minnie, you still there, mate? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear the music? I can, yeah. Can right, that last song was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I actually liked it. So did I you? Did I, so did I. There you go. <laughs> Aaron chose that one. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> I've got to get some support around here. Normally he's banned from choosing songs. <laughs> he just snuck th- that one in without I thought it was knowing. safe. You're using yeah. an actual artist that you love. I thought, oh, you know, I can, I can make that happen. So many better songs by her, like Rush. Anyways, right, we're here time. to talk about crypto and not your shit taste in music. <laughs> right, let's move on. <laughs> All righty. Okay, so, yeah, just uh, wheeling back to where we picked up off. Uh, pick. No, hang on. Where we're going to pick up. Where we left off. Mm. Is that the right sentence? It's Tuesday, mate. Yep, yep, yep. We're yeah. out of the weekend. Well, true. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. We had um, the uh, the pizza Bitcoin um, uh, uh, pizza night uh, last night. So we all met up and had a few drinks. So I'm a little bit dusty this morning. But uh, one must go on. Anyways, oh. I will just <laughs> stick to what we're here you, to talk about. You are the crypto social <laughs> butterfly around here, that's for sure. Uh, it's, we don't get to see each other enough, you know, and then you all rock up together and you're like, oh, I haven't seen you for ages, glug, 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 you know, and then all of a sudden it's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Righty. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, uh, what are you talking about? Okay. The, the transition of blockchain technology, crypto, into real estate. Basically, um, the presentation you did with Rewa. Yeah, sort of just giving these uh, real estate people an oversight into the technology and where it's going and then how to adopt it, um, which I, I just thought was great. I mean, there was – how many people were in the room, do you reckon? About 30, 40, something like that? I think we had around 30, yeah. Yeah, cool. And, um, yeah, and even the responses, like uh, during the breaks and stuff like that, um, when I was talking to them, though, a lot of the real estate people were like, wow, this is, you know, full on. I didn't run, didn't realise that where it was going and that sort of stuff. So it was just a great service and job that you're doing. Do you, um, because, I mean, you know, crypto blockchain is pretty much going up against traditional banking and finance and traditional sort of business and stuff. Do you find that... Um, you get a bit of resistance from uh, real estate people or are they kind of starting to open up a bit more? Uh, I guess it it depends on the level of education, I suppose, and their level of exposure to what's happening. Um, Real estate can be pretty isolating in a lot of ways because you're dealing with clients on a day-to-day basis and buyers and sellers take priority over everything else. So... It's sometimes you live in a world where you're in that bubble and you don't necessarily see what's coming on the horizon. That's why I think we were taking the initiative, the first in Australia, to actually put this course on for our agents is a really amazing thing. Yeah. So is there resistance? Um, sometimes conceptually, like because um, we're dealing. If you haven't had any exposure to crypto or understand anything about it and I start talking about how we can tokenize properties and how we can create other revenue streams and how the blockchain can create identity tokens and like if the concept of it is just it's mind-blowing so I often look around into the crowd and look at the faces and think yeah I've gone too far I need to yeah. slow down <laughs> <Wander back laughs> and, <a bit. laughs> and very succinctly you know um, start a few sentences but that was at the beginning and I think Now we're getting more and more uh, mainstream attention in terms of the crypto space. I think that it is becoming now where I think you might remember I asked in that particular course that we just did how many people had heard of the blockchain and Bitcoin or how many people hadn't heard and there was nobody in the room that hadn't heard. Now the first course I presented, I would probably say there was about, I actually think about 60% hadn't heard of anything. Okay. So, you, you know, change. that's changed a lot. Yeah, in 12, 18 months, it's changed a lot. So, yes, there is some resistance. And the resistance that I find is sometimes it's the way we're doing it is fine and it works. Yep. Why do we need to do anything different? Yep. Okay. So, and then the next one is 
how can you tokenize an asset that's because it's on a title you can't change the ownership or your track stamp duty so there there's explanations around how we do it and then we don't touch the title but once they start to understand that concept and they start to realize that it can actually apply to them in their businesses i think that's when they start to actually open up and relax a bit yeah um so the energy does change in the room halfway through because the first as you know the first couple of hours is just explaining fundamentals of blockchain yeah and how crypto works but then we have to go into things like decentralized finance as opposed to centralized finance uh, so people understand why, you know, when they see things in the media, they kind of then start to understand that's not decentralized finance, that's centralized finance, which is what we all know. Yep. So, yeah, that's, it's education. It's education. Yeah, and that's what I liked about it too, because you kept it pretty light in a sense. I mean, you did dive in a bit, but you didn't go hardcore, you know, um, because I think that would turn off a, a lot of people, especially at the beginning. You know, yeah, so I, I absolutely. think that that's that's an important thing to to be doing. Um, but like you said, was um, uh, I mean, the, the, the kind of the what I th- got through it was you're letting these people know that they have to catch up on technology because this is where it's going. You know, and yeah. like you said, is that they like? Why should I change? I already know um, how to do it. I know what to say. I know all the ins and outs and this, and I've been doing it for years. They find it very uh, resistant to uh, change and upheaval, especially when it comes to technology. I mean, people were refusing to do emails when it first came out. You know, and now it's just a day of the normal thing. You know, um, but yeah, that that resistance is is like you know, how do you get a hungry lion away from a piece of meat? You know, you throw them a bigger piece, you know. So that's kind of that's the only way to do it, you know. So I like that analogy. So yeah. I, it's a ripper, actually. <laughs> Is it, well, that's what you have to do with with, with people, especially in, in traditional uh, finance and, and real estate and that sort of stuff, is just go, hey, listen, here's a bigger piece of meat and you should be looking at doing this because if you're not starting to learn it now, you're already behind by, mm. you know, a, a substantial period of time. But um, in three to five years' time, this is going to be mainstream and normal, so you need to get on board now. Do you think you kind of get that across to them? Did, are they picking oh, that up? yeah. Yeah, because remember in the last course when you were there, Brandon, we had that lady that said, oh, I had this person come in and they wanted to buy this property and part of it was with Bitcoin. How do I write the contract up? Yeah, yeah cool. So now they're starting to see that this is actually going to infiltrate their industry without them even being having the education, so they need to get the education. Mm. So, you know, obviously we, we talked about the answer to that question. So. And it sort of helped everybody go, oh, my God, what if somebody walked into my office yep. and they said that? Yep. Or if somebody walked in and said, look, I don't want to buy a whole property. I just want to buy a fraction of a property. Can you help me? Yep. Well, you know, the the standard real estate agent that's had no exposure will go, what are you talking about? I don't understand what you're talking about. Where these guys will now go, oh, yeah, I understand that. I can, I can send you in the right direction. You know, they, they have the resources then to say, oh, well, there are people that can help. I need to find out more about it. So I think if it becomes real, and I think it will become real, and I don't reckon whether – I feel like – sorry, a bit of a sidetrack, I guess, but the, the convergence at the, mo- at the moment of AI, of um, mm. blockchain, of technology on a greater scale – um, and decentralized finance. This this whole convergence that's, convergence that's happening now is meaning that things are moving exponentially fast. So I think your your three to five years is probably probably a little bit long. Yep. Um, I think it might be if somebody's already coming in and saying I want to pay with Bitcoin. I reckon you know two years to three years we'll we'll see this particularly in real estate happen very quickly. It's happening across the board on many many fronts. Yes. But I also think real estate's one of those real world assets that um, is taking the lead in terms of tokenization. But tokenization is everywhere at the moment. Yeah, hundred percent agree. And um uh an experience I think it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. I um had a meeting with a, a big accounting firm here in Perth. Um, and when I sat down I had my CDO with me as well and we sat down and said, oh, Okay, how can we help you? You know, because I didn't really understand what the meeting was about. Um, they're quite a large firm, and they said, "Okay, well, we've looked into you, and we've done due, due diligence. We had a look at your website, your particulars, your, your disclosures, all this sort of stuff." 
and uh, what we need is a go-to person to educate our because uh, they do um, uh, what's it called um, financial advising as well. They're an accountant firm that does financial advising. They've got different arms, you know, different um, levels that, that do different things. And they said, uh, we're getting an increasing uh, amount of our clients that want to invest into crypto. And we really don't understand it all that well. So we need to be able to refer them to a reputable person that can educate them and know that our clients are going to be taken care of. I went, oh, wow. And I said, what sort of uh, uptake are you talking about? And he said, okay, it's about 20 to 25% of all our clients are now asking how do they buy crypto and Bitcoin and how do they invest in it? Wow. Right? That's a wow. big jump in numbers. Isn't it? It's massive. That's, so that's that, fantastic. So they, they brought it to the board and they discussed it and said, okay, I think this is something that we need to be looking into and be preparing for. So it's just another arm or it'll be another floor of, of their um, uh, accounting division and uh, investment advice. Um, you know, so you can see that coming through. You know, and that's kind of see where I see uh, real estate as well. You probably end up with real estate agents that's just going to have an office that's dedicated to blockchain. Do you know what I mean? In the future, do, 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 I definitely yeah. would have a department that, that, that is, you know, within a real world sort of traditional real estate agency. I'd imagine that everybody would have their um, department in tokenized assets for sure. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's the the you know the um, the bridge that's happening between traditional finance and uh, and, and and crypto and blockchain is the, the same with um you know like I don't need to go to a bank to get a loan anymore. You know you can buy houses and invest in property just in crypto. You don't need banks. You don't need advisors. Uh, you know that sort of thing. So it is it's just not just an emerging technology. Um, it, it's something that's taking over. Um, you know, but what are some of the like, um, well, let's say the big obstacles that uh, you're finding from uh, people in real estate and, and this technology? Like, what are what are some of their major um, uh, resistant points? One might say. Depends on their level of education. Is lack of education is the one hundred percent biggest barrier to entry of any of this is lack of education. Secondary is they might have the education. But as you know, um, cryptos are fairly complex beast to navigate yeah. um, when you're trying to invest or, or go onto a decentralized finance platform and um, stake assets or anything you want to do. It's, it's complex and it's very easy to do the wrong thing and lose your money. And we hear stories like that all the time. So I think yeah. that scares people as well. Yeah. Um, they also, I guess, there's a barrier in terms of them, the understanding they have that uh, crypto is a Ponzi scheme and it will all collapse and everybody will lose their money. There's a lot of that in the world. Yep. Um, but actually, interestingly, when you're talking about accounting and accountants and lawyers as well, because mm -hmm. we look at that industry yep. as well, yep. these are the people, the accountants, the lawyers, um, the real estate agents that will actually start bringing this stuff to, to more attention and perhaps, you know, we need to probably be educated. Well, we definitely need to be educating the lawyers for smart yeah. contracts. Yep. We need to be educating the accountants. So not only do they understand um, mm. the finance side of crypto, but they understand the fundamentals of it and why it's important in our Web3 world. Yep. And the same with real estate agents and other professional settlement agents, Um you know the world, it, the financial advisors of the world. A lot of the financial advisors now do have a percentage of their bucket invested in cryptos. Yep, that's right. Um, and it's and it's interesting. And that twenty to twenty five percent of their client base for a, for an accounting firm is absolutely remarkable. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, that, yeah I was yeah. was not expecting that at all. You know, and they just so that you know. I think it's like if you have an investor mindset and you mm -hmm. look at the returns in crypto, yep. you want to get a piece of that stuff, of right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to be on that train. You don't want to miss that. Yeah. So when people start to see that, I think that's when the questions start. Um, yeah, those those UXs are, are clunky, and it is hard now to get into it. Yep. It was, it's, it's easier now than what it used oh, to be. Oh, yes, but, yes. <laughs> um, I think I had to send my money to Slovenia or somewhere when I first started oh, really? investing in crypto. Right. And it took like 24 hours. I mean, like, this money floating around going, shoot, is it ever going to land where it's supposed to land? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's obviously a lot easier now. Mm. But uh, it's still clunky. So, um, 
you know, we have a lot of hurdles to come across. But once people are like they are now saying, how do I get a piece of it? That's what makes it go. That's where people say, well, accounting firms, like you mentioned, or real estate agents, you know, they have to go, oh, well, okay, we need to get on board. So their education, um, the smart legal contracts needs to be, you know, we've got Ellie on board in tech stack. Yeah, he's yep. um, very good at smart legal contracts. Uh, he's 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 that guy, is a walking brain, isn't he? <laughs> he's just he's just one of those people. That's why he wears that yarmulke on the top of his head, um, <laughs> is to keep he's his brain. Keep his big brain. <laughs> <laughs> He's next level, oh, next wow. level. All right, well, we're going to Absolutely. go to a song, and uh, and when we come back, we're going to talk about um, maybe a little bit about Ellie, maybe, uh, but also the, <laughs> the bear market and adoption. All right, back sure. soon. Curious about cryptocurrency and want to learn more? Orange Brick Road offers expert crypto consulting and online courses to help you understand the exciting world of crypto. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced crypto user, Orange Brick Road can help you gain the knowledge and confidence you need to succeed. Take the first step towards mastering crypto with Orange Brick Road at orangebrickroad.com.au. Yesterday was the best day to learn crypto. Today is the second. Oh, they are on to you, Brandon. Prisoner of society here on Edge Radio Australia, the crypto hour of power. Mm. Uh, mate, um, you know, you're, you're a good citizen, you know. You yes. like, you, Am I? You like to follow all the rules. And, uh, <laughs> That's who you talk to, mate. Oh, the tongue <laughs> could not be any me. further into my cheek. I see, <laughs> literally pointed me into my ear. Uh, oh, great uh, to, now to have many on the phone. Um, thank you for, for hanging about there. Really appreciate that. And I've got to tell you, uh, I'm sitting back and I'm listening to the conversation. And, man, you got some great info. Uh, mm. Honestly, this, this crossover to real estate is a big deal to me. Yeah. I, you know, And then... If I could put my two, two bobs worth in here, I, so many people say, you know, how do I get involved in investing? And they talk, they talk about real estate as it, it's just so hard because you need big deposits, all of that. Yep. Now, knowing what I know with, with the crypto space, the fact that you can buy you know, shares in property effectively, you know, yep. it's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I think it's going to bring a lot of people in who have been kept out of the market in the past. Yeah, I'd 100% agree with that because, um, yeah, it's a, a barrier of entry. Yeah, you know, is, absolutely. Is the amount. Well, so, so, you know, you can have younger people that can put in $1,000. Sure. You know? I mean, look, I would love to own some commercial property because I'd like to, you know, basically be in control of my own destiny with Edge. Uh, and yep. it's a 40% deposit to, to borrow the money to, to build it. And so, yep. you know, I'm not sure about, you know, everybody else um, who's listening to the show, but I don't have a couple hundred thousand dollars in the in the old couch. That's right. <laughs> you should have it in Bitcoin anyway. I should, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we might work on uh, tokenizing this radio station. Why what do you not? think, Minnie? I think we should. <laughs> That's it. We'll raise some capital. We'll do an ICO. Why not? Smash it. <laughs> Great idea. I love it. Uh, cool. All right. Well, when we uh, finished off, we were just basically talking about the resistance, uh, you know, of, of certain people and, and um, you know, institutions and how these traditional finance and uh, accounting and real estate and uh, other forms of traditional uh, business are starting to look at the adoption of crypto. But... What is, um, and we're also talking about the time frame of people getting in, and I agree with that, uh, with your assessment. It's going to be a lot quicker than the three to five years, especially for these larger companies. Um, you know, like a company like uh, Michael Saylor with, uh, with his company, you know, they put in, was it $5.9 billion in the crypto or something crazy like that? Um, you know, firms like Ernst & Young, Bank of America, you know, th these big firms. Now, when they put like hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars into crypto and to Bitcoin, the uh, the CEO or the manager, or whatever you call them, of Ernst & Young, for example, doesn't wake up in the morning, yawn, have his coffee and go, oh shit, I might buy a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin today, no. right? <laughs> it kind of doesn't work like that. They have to take it to committees, they have to vote on it, they have to then do the research, produce papers, talk about it. So by the time that these buyers, these people, these companies are actually buying this and announcing it, they've probably been in the making for two to three years of research. You know, so it looks sudden on the outside, but uh, it's definitely uh, something that they they spend a lot of time because they have to. They have to spend a lot of time doing. Now, this is where um, I wanted to talk about. We're seeing an uptake in um, you know real estate agents are looking at it. You know, traditional um, uh, uh, financial advisors, accountants, that sort of stuff. But they're doing this many during a bear market. 
you know, what's it going to be yeah, like? Yeah, well, it's the best time, really, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now's <laughs> the time to be doing it. But if you're yeah. looking at a little bit of adoption now, geez, what do you reckon it's going to be like in a year or two when the market's going up? Yeah, well, I think it, we've well, not financial advice. Yep. My opinion only. I think we've seen the bottom in this yep. run. Hundred percent, sister. Um, and I reckon, you know, Ethereum we saw probably in June, probably around June last year. Yep. Um, so you know, you definitely, it's it's heading up. Um, and this is when you see a lot more money come into the space. Yeah. And a lot more and attention. A lot more attention. And, and that's, again, when I referred to investors actually seeing the returns that people are getting because it'll be, you know, every every bull market will have every YouTuber out there in force saying, well, follow me, follow me, I'll show you how to get rich. Yep. Um, so, you know, that is definitely going to happen again and we'll get a lot more money coming in and it'll be not just, um, you know, your residential money. I think it's going to be... Um, Many more of those in of those institutions that are it's it probably having a hedge against the banks to be fair because um, the way the the macro is in terms of the banking system itself mm-hmm. we're looking at imminent collapse essentially yep. um, the system's broken we've known that since two thousand and eight and we've just yep. exacerbated the problem since then so we are now in a situation where we have so many problems in our banking system that. It's not going to get better anytime soon. Oh, so. I don't know. Look, I don't know. I, I, I watch Channel Seven and Channel Nine, and Channel Ten. Apparently, everything's peachy. <laughs> it's um, yeah, know, that's, it's, that's it's, the yeah, problem. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, the I think problem. Well, you know what? We, we can solve this problem very easy. All yeah. of us just send our money to the Ukraine, and yeah. and, and, and and climate change will be fixed. Everything's great. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> straight to the Ukraine. <laughs> get that money I'm, laundered. I'm all, <laughs> I'm all for positive outlooks. But, yeah. Uh, yeah nah. <laughs> Oh, but it's so important um, that people realise that, yeah, we are looking at it. There is a collapse. It's going to happen. Uh, yeah. yeah. So people yeah. are talking about, you know, um, the, the coming recession. I actually think we're already in one, mm. you know, the start of well, one. Well, it's definitely yeah. started, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and we'll see interest rates coming back soon yeah. um, because they have to. There's nothing else left. Well, um, They have to start controlling inflation and it's just, you know, the triggers they're using now is just all, it's all sideways from... You know, from when we dropped the gold standard, I think it's just been a big downhill run, but we've lasted a while. But I think you're definitely going to see people putting money in and it will be a hedge against the banks because we that's where we're going to see the most pain, I think, in the next year or so. Yes, I completely agree with that, mate. I can see banks collapsing and some banks have already collapsed, you know, and we haven't even yeah. got into the deep part of it yet. You know, I think big, uh, you know, uh, even investors in real estate, that sort of stuff, um, you know, well, people that have invested in real estate, when real, when interest rates hit, you know, 7 8 9%, you know, that's going to make it really tough on a lot of people. It certainly is. So look, um, look, some of us can remember, I certainly know my parents' mortgage was 18.5%. Yeah, that's the recession that we had to have. Oh, yeah, and no, we're all yeah. so much better for it. Yeah, um, yeah that's right. so Thank you, great. Paul Keating. Thanks for that, know. mate. Yeah, okay. <laughs> thanks. I didn't get my bike for Christmas. <laughs> um, but it's, it's. I think so many people aren't aware that it can get that bad. You know, they think that these interest rates are going to sit down there. I, I can't, and sorry, it escapes me right now, but I was reading just this morning about a country that's got inflation currently at uh, 97%. Yeah. Like, uh, I can't even fathom that. I just can't. Yeah. Well, these things have happened in history, and yeah. generally what happens in history in, in the past uh, repeats itself. That's right. You yeah. know? To know where we're going, you need to lo- look back and see where we've been. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Um, so when you're saying the hedge uh, against uh, the inflation and uh, against banks, can you just, uh, just quickly sort of un- uh, unravel that a bit. What what do you like? How would you explain that to like a, a noob or you know just a, a regular person on the street? I guess I would give an example of um, what happens with a centralised banking system when, for instance, something like Cyprus in two thousand and thirteen happens, where the government decides that everybody's got to chuck in ten percent of their earnings, or mm. I can't remember the exact percent, but let's say ten. It might have been even more than that. So that means everything that they've had in the bank sitting there that they're thinking, oh, that money is safe, is not safe. The person that's put the money in the bank does not own that money. The Mm -hmm. government can come in and take that money away. If we have a major catastrophe, the government can do that. 
it's been done and it can happen again. Yep. If you have all your savings in a bank account or your invested mental. with a centralised um, organisation, in other words, one person owns it, mm. and you have a collapse of major scale, you suddenly have absolutely nothing, nothing, no money in the bank at all. Yep. So when I say a hedge against the banks, what I'm saying is as a, as a percentage of your net wealth, it would be a good idea, in my opinion, not financial advice, to have some in crypto, yep. Ethereum, Bitcoin, or any of the other coins, but Ethereum, Bitcoin fundamentally, um, yep. as, a, as a safe, secure storage of your asset. And the reason it's safe and secured is underpinned by the blockchain, which is immutable, yep. which is transparent, mm-hmm. and it is not, it is your, you are in custody of those assets. In other words, you have all your coins on your ledger which is just like a USB, and that is your wealth sitting in your hand. Nobody can touch it. Nobody can take money out of it unless you allow them to do so. You can then trade peer-to-peer. So this is where the big unlock is, I think. If I can trade with you, Brendan, if I want to come in and do one of your courses, I don't have to go to a bank to get money or use my debit card to get money out of my account to give to you. I can transfer you the Bitcoin that it costs me to do that course. Likewise, I can do that. On the street, if I want to buy somebody selling their car, I can do that in the store if I want to buy some food. Mm. If I lose all my money in the bank, mm. how am I going to buy food? Yep. How am I going to pay rent? Well, this uh, is... And this is sort of like, I know this looks, this sounds and looks like the, the um, apocalypse, but mm-hmm. I'm, I have a very positive outlook about the outcome of all of this, and I think that this this new financial system that we've got underpinned by the blockchain is actually what's going to transition us away from that traditional finance model of having centralised people in control and governments in control into self-custody, into Mm. sovereignty. So for me, this looks like a really good picture, even though the middle term is going to be absolutely chaotic and pretty disgusting. I I actually agree. To me, we're going to to see some very hard times, but I think ultimately these hard times, we talk about, you know, your bull or your bear market. I mean, this would make... You, know, you want to buy in your bear market, mm-hmm. well, this is going to be an unbelievable opportunity. This is going to be an opportunity to rebuild um, in, a, in a more sustainable and fair and equitable way. Yep. 100%. 100% yeah. Yep. And that's, uh, I mean, six, seven years ago, we were talking about, uh, you know, our oh, banks are going to adopt this and countries are going to do that and investment firms and there was all these pipe dreams. For the last two years, we're all seeing it now. You know, and I think people are starting to realise too. Um, you know, when your money is in, in, well, when yeah, your money is in a bank, it's not your money anymore. You know, and yeah. they, they can take that whenever they want. You know, Canada, for example, in you know, the truckers' oh, protests, exactly, uh, and over and over and over again. Um, yeah, so, and it, this is actually good advice is, um, uh, you know, have at least twenty percent of uh, of your wealth in crypto and Bitcoin. You know, it is a very good place to start just as a hedge uh, against, um, you know, debasement of currency. Uh, which is to coming. Your, your, your blue chip stock, really, isn't it? It is, man. <laughs> it is. When you start to see it, like, you know, um, it just in normal people's mouths when they're talking about it, you know, you kind of know, okay, yeah. you know, it's starting to be accepted now. Whereas before, even two or three years ago, it was all drug money and on the dark net and only, you know, yeah. these criminals are using it. And So if any criminals are out there and you think about using Bitcoin, <laughs> don't. <laughs> you know. It's not the right space for you. <laughs> no, that's right. You know, Bitcoin is, is, you know, all for money laundering and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, terrorism and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, the the number one used for money laundering and terrorism is the US dollar. Maybe Absolutely. They fucking bounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to do that. The, the petrodollar, the, yeah. the weapon dollar, whatever you want yeah, to call it. That's yeah. right. It's, uh, yeah, well, that one. The dollar is the money of war. Yeah, you know, spot on. It's the money for war. All right, well, that brings us to a conclusion. Um, if uh, anyone's interested in uh, doing your courses or getting in touch, where would uh, how would they go about getting in touch with you? So the best um, way to do that is to go on TechStack okay. um, site. And we're an education um, company, so we will be um, delivering courses not just to Rewa, but to... Um, all sorts of institutions and individuals. Yep. So it's techstack.io. Yeah, and that's T E C T E C S T A C K A C K dot I O. 
reach out through there. Um, send us a message. We're in. We're always developing courses because, as we all know, it moves so fast this space, and particularly the next twelve months are going to be absolutely crazy because the advent of AI is just changing everything. Mm, it's moving fast. So, yeah. moving fast. And look, I bring it on. I think it's yep. going to be fantastic. Obviously, yep. hugely disruptive, but reach yep. out. Have a look at our courses, um, and we can then keep you in touch with what's going on. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can see you in a class or a virtual class soon. Yeah, excellent, and highly recommended too. You guys do an awesome job. I actually went at the start of the day. I said, "Oh my god, how am I going to get through this? It's an entire day." <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brad. <laughs> oh, jeez, the love you can feel it, right? But no, it, it went it went really fast, and it was very educational, and I was engaged the whole time, which I was not expecting excellent. at all. Oh, so I'm you do a fantastic job, mate. You really, really do. All right, Thank we'll leave you. it at that. And uh, as we go to the the next song. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to do my radio voice. What do you call it? The big drop? Just do your big drop, mate. Big drop. <laughs> okay, you ready? Ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Now, do you want me to press the play? Do you want to talk over? Do you want to be... You do the sexy 80s kind yeah. of thing. Is that the, the yeah, vibe you Yeah, cool, man. And let's we'll just go. fade into the song. Like, okay, okay let, let's do that. Are you ready? Okay. Yes, ready. okay. This is his big moment. Okay, thanks for that. Right. <laughs> thanks for that mini talk <laughs> saying. All right, that was the crypto hour of power, of power, of power. Oh, the greatest time in all the week, one o'clock on Tuesdays. Everything to do with crypto, 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 crypto. Each way, <laughs> <laughs> How was that? <laughs> <laughs>